ask anything during the presentation, please put it on the chat or please just like put your camera and and I know that you want to say something. Oh, I won't say it because I, I'll be sharing the screen. So yeah, just just say something. I'll be happy to discuss everything. So I'm going to share. I'm going to share my screen now. And and am I sharing the screen? Not quite yet. I, I did flip it over to multiple, so you should be able to do that now. Okay, perfect. All right, so now you should be able to see the beginning of the presentation. Perfect. Um, we're going to get started with the immune system in the space flight environment. So uh, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, which is um, I'm going to do a little introduction to immunology. Of course, there's uh, I, I, people in life sciences in this presentation, physicians, you, you'll definitely know some stuff about the immune system. So I'm not going to give a, a class on immunology, but definitely uh, at an introductory level, I will introduce some umbrella concepts that are important to take into account when we are in the spaceflight environment. Now, immunology in the spaceflight environment changes drastically, and there are thousands of changes. But I'm just going to introduce those terms, those, those important aspects that can influence the rest. Uh, and I think that it will be quite insightful. And I'll definitely go slowly because of my strong Spanish accent. So uh, I'll, I'll just take, take it easy. Now, the, the thing about, the thing about immunologists is that they like to sell their work by introducing it as the biggest problem in history right for example if you're studying diabetes in your paper you'll in, in your paper you'll say that diabetes is going to destroy the world etc now here i'm presenting a problem with the immune system and, and microgravity and radiation and, and the space flight conditions and i i must say from the very beginning i do want to clarify that I don't think that we have a problem that will stop us from doing space exploration, even, even in deeper space missions. I, I think that we have a, a situation where things are changing and we need to pay attention to these changes because they are important and they have the potential to be significant. We don't know if they will be yet. So we're going to care about this because we're going to go anyway. We are preparing the Artemis program to return to the moon. We're preparing the building of a lunar station, an orbital station called the Gateway. We are going to be in deep space for longer periods of time. And then in the, in the near future or mid to near future, you know, SpaceX is already building the Starship prototypes and they're already being tested to eventually have a spacecraft that has the lunar landing capabilities and eventually go to Mars. And that involves deep space, long time in space, long exposure to radiation, and definitely long exposure to stronger microgravity. Because in low Earth orbit, we are in, at microgravity, but still not zero G, and definitely stronger than the microgravity, that, weaker than the microgravity that we could experience on our way to Mars. So we're going to go anyway, and we need to care about this. So let's do a little introduction to what to what innate and adaptive immunity are. So innate immunity is non-specific, meaning that whatever happens to your body, you're gonna get the same reaction. And it's going to be immediate. It's gonna happen all the time. You get a bump, you get inflammation. Doesn't matter the type of bump, it doesn't matter the type of cut, the type of wound, it's gonna be immediate and it's gonna be the same. And examples of innate immunity are barriers. Skin, epithelia, it could be the, the gut epithelium, it could be the lung epithelium, as long as it's a protective physical barrier, it's considered innate immunity. But also some very important cells like the macrophage. This cell is large compared to other cells and it's, the, the, it's an excellent white blood cell that is circulating our blood and it eats everything that is wrong. So if there's dead cells, cellular debris, if there is a virus, a, a bacteria, the macrophage will phagocytose it. That's why we call this cell a phagocyte, because it eats stuff. And then we have the neutrophil, which is another phagocyte. It also eats stuff, but it, it's not as effective as the macrophage. The thing about the neutrophil is that it has cytotoxic granules. It can release cytotoxic proteins or cytotoxic reagents that can kill other cells. Talking about granules, we also have the mast cell. This cell is just full of granules, 
And upon certain triggers, upon certain situations, you can get mast cell degranulation. Basically, all the contents are thrown out. And these granules contain histamine, heparin, and en enzymes, all sorts of proteins that can lead to allergic reactions, for example. That's why you take antihistamine when you have allergic reactions, because your mast cells are just throwing histamine to your body with, 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 uh, as if there was no tomorrow. Then we have another innate cell, the natural killer. This cell is innate because it's non-specific, but it has the, the ability to kill infected cells by virally infected cells. So for example, a cell that has been infected with COVID-19, well, natural killer cells are going to deal with them. And we have a very curious type of cell called the innate lymphocyte. Now, lymphocytes are normally not part of the innate response because they have memory and they're specific, but these ones in particular, they're not specific. All they do upon an encounter with a pathogen is to secrete these proteins called cytokines. And there are many types of cytokines and they have different roles, but the general role of cytokines is to amplify an immune response and to tilt it towards a, a specific direction, a direction to orient it towards a specific need. And then we have adaptive immunity, which is targeted, delayed, takes a few days, and powerful, very, very powerful. We have dendritic cell, which is actually is an innate cell, but this cell presents a little piece of the pathogen in the secondary lymphoid organs, like the lymph nodes or the spleen. It presents an antigen, which is a piece of the pathogen, to the lymphocytes, like the T cell. And you definitely heard about the T cell at some point, especially with this COVID-19 situation. And there's two types of T cells. We have the killer T cell, also known as the CD8 positive. That is just a receptor that we can find in the surface. And the killer T cell just kills and kills in a targeted way, super efficiently. It kills tumor cells, virally infected cells, everything. And the helper T cell, which, which 